So we're at McDonald's right now. What is the significance of this specific McDonald's to you? To be honest with you, like this is where it all started. I don't want, I don't want to care, right? They had a family, man. Jesus, how the fuck you doing? Nade Shot's storybook career began here, on Optic, an organization that was at the time small but growing, just as Matt Hag was. Nade Shot had played in MLG events prior to joining Optic. He'd been an amateur level Halo 2 player and had appeared at MLG Chicago as a Gears of War player in 2007. In 2009, he also played in the MLG National Championship with a team called Genesis and managed a fourth uh, place finish. And I am the captain of the Optic Major League Gaming PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 competitive team. I play both and I'm the captain on both. He even tried to use those experiences to help give MLG lessons in an attempt to make some money on the side from the job that he was currently working at McDonald's. What I want to do is, um, I want to offer lessons, alright? Now, for some of you who actually do play competitively or just want to get better as a player or a team, I will be offering lessons. They, uh, they obviously, they won't be free, but I guarantee after a lesson, which is either going to be half an hour or an hour long, uh, you will be... In November 2010, Nade Shot appeared in his first major event with the Optic squad he was leading. They placed 8th at the 2010 MLG National Championship. All the while, Nade Shot was still maintaining his YouTube channel, where he'd also been making sniping videos and a variety of others for Optic Nation, a channel that was mainly centered around Statement. sniping. Not, not an announcement, more of just like an FYI. Um, obviously, uh, obviously, I... I'm sniping, I'll continue to snipe, and that's not going to change, but, you know, I, I, I've been getting kind of annoyed uh, to an extent, because lately as I've been posting on Nation, people have just tell me, why why are you still sniping, give up, Black Ops, nobody can do it, nobody likes it. An unlikely turn of events put Nade Shot back on the Optic roster for MLG Dallas in April 2011, after he'd previously been cut um, from the as team. As you guys know, MLG Dallas is right around the corner. It's this weekend. I'm actually leaving tonight. Originally, I wasn't going to be playing. I was going to be uh, just coming to the event, you know, just having fun seeing everybody. But unfortunately, uh, Optic Grambino, the new captain of Optic Gaming, the competitive team, he's been hospitalized, and uh, he's actually pretty sick. He's got a stomach disorder. So, uh, you know, I, I wish the best for him. I hope he gets better soon because we'll need him at Columbus. But I will be taking his uh, spot at, um, at Dallas. Big Timer is the captain of the team now uh, while Rambo is away. And obviously I haven't played in a while, so I'm, uh, I'm curious to see what happens. Uh, as you guys know, I retired from competitive gaming for, uh, for a little bit to really focus on the YouTube thing. Nade Shot's clutch play and the skill of the rest of the team, which now included Big Timer for the first time, helped earn the team a third place finish. Next, the team headed to MLG Columbus, where Nade Shot's Optic Nation squad placed sixth, while proudly watching as Optic Gaming took first for the first time in franchise history. With Felony, he's gonna have to clear house on these guys, and he oh! does just that! Felony wow. is a monster right now. Wow. You've got to hear the energy. We placed sixth place, Optic Nation. Optic Gaming, for uh, many of you, placed first. So that's great. You know, the Optic organization coming out on top, getting that W finally, getting that event win that we've been waiting for. Uh, it's too bad that I couldn't bring it around this time. But congrats to Rambo, Merc, JCap, and Big Timer. Uh, contrary to belief, we're all very, very good friends, and <laughs> we just want someone to win. Before heading to Anaheim in 2011, Nade Shot won $5,000 in the Billionaire Free For All Challenge. But uh, for my, anyone that doesn't know, most of you probably do, I actually won the Billionaire Challenge with Alki David. I won $5,000 in a Free For All tournament. So, you know, for a lot, a lot of you that know I work at McDonald's, that was a pretty cool perk. You know, it's nice to have. I'm not going to lie. And then I won uh, $10,000 for Suicide Awareness Charity. So that was cool, too. Nade Shot watched Optic Gaming take third at MLG Anaheim in July, as he and his new team of Envy came up eighth. Let's go, Stump. Let's go. Get him up, baby. Yeah!
One month later at MLG Raleigh, things turned around for Nadeshot and Envy as they picked up a third place finish, even after beating out Optic Gaming. Less than a week later, Nadeshot was acquired by Optic once again and joined a team full of former teammates, including Merc, Big Timer, and Vengeance. There, the team played through their greatest event in team history. With a $400,000 clash prize on the line for the winning team, Nadeshot and company pulled out all the stops to pick up a first place finish at Call of Duty XP. And they don't have their main slayer, Gunshi. He's knocked out, as well as Fear Love. So it's up to Excellence and Arsenal to try to do something about it. And 29 seconds left, and another take out there. So it looks like we've got a 3v1 situation up all alone. And there you have it, Optic Gaming. It's your Call of Duty XP 2011 champions. They're taking home $400,000. It's going to be $100,000 per player. And on the flip side, you've got Infinity that's going to take home $200,000 at 50 per player. Give it up for these guys. It was an excellent matchup as the U.S. beats over the U.K. There you have it, Optic Gaming, your Call of Duty XP 2011 champions. I'm going to tell your story. You're in college but you made it very public that you worked at McDonald's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for a little while, Nate Shot. You just made 100 grand. How does that feel? I don't want to work at McDonald's anymore. <laughs> I was teamed with Big Timer, Merc, and Vengeance, and that was the $1 million tournament played on Modern Warfare 3, and we actually uh, defeated Infinity, uh, which is a European team, to win $400,000. Now, I was fucking, I was going nuts, guys. Like, you have no idea how excited I was to win that. By the end of 2011, Nate Shot had taken the time to reflect on how it was that he became a pro player and got to where he is now. Uh, how I started off, I was in about 6th or 7th grade when my brother's friend, his friend was actually pretty rich. He had a huge house, this big-ass mansion, and he had Xbox. And my brother would always come home gloating about this game called Halo 2. And I always, I really didn't know anything about the game. And it always intrigued me because my brother, you know, talked about this game so goddamn much. And I knew nothing about it. I was still a young kid. Didn't really know anything about video games. Except for like the classics on Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64. And for some reason, I ended up at this kid's house. Uh... Um, he has a cousin my age, and me and his cousin were pretty good friends, and I ended up going over there. And the first time I played Halo 2, I was so bad at it that I didn't like it. But then, I played it more and more, and I started to love this damn game. Halo 2 was so much fun to me. And is the pressure now on Nate Shot, the prominent YouTuber, everyone's favorite gamer, is Nate Shot going to be able to close this one out? He needs to do a 1v3 clutch. We have not seen that happen yet. He is going to get a kill on Slap Package. In April 2012, Nadeshot played for Optic in the UMG Classic with a largely makeshift squad. Despite his clutch play, the team came up third as a team composed of many former team members called Apex finished first. I like what he's doing, but you do know that they are going to be watching those flanks. This is not a good, good position for him to be in. He's coming from behind. Oh, this is not happening. Nate Shot is going to get the kill there. He did manage to take out two guys. Now he has to play this one slow. He fake planted. He has 18 seconds left on the clock. He did find the guy over by the staircase. I think he's going to play super aggressive. Is he going to do it? Yes, he does. Nate Shot. Now he needs to get in time to plant to defuse the bomb. Nate Shot with a 1v3 clutch to close it. Unbelievable. Final four must be. In May, Nate Shot returned to the competition in the third person shooter field, something he had not done since Years of War, when he appeared in a Max Payne 3 tournament. Right now. Nate Shot scared his opponents around the corner. Stainville was waiting for him, cleaned up the kill, and Nate Shot after capturing the ball. We're just going to come in here and take this one away. You have my own competitive team now. I have joined the well known Black Ops competitive team called LVG. They won two MLG events last year. Optic, of course, won two MLG events as well. And they are a very good squad. So, who, what our team is, it's Aix and TP, who have been teaming forever on LVG. And then I also picked up John, who was a member of Team Fear, who actually won MLG Raleigh. So, all of these guys have. After three consecutive UMG events with pickup teams, including Jute, Icons, and MDB, Nadeshot started a new leverage team in September of 2012. 
Nade shot return not long after a lackluster eighth place finish by Leverage with sad news in October. That my mom actually passed away at the age of 47 on Saturday night. Uh, she died in her sleep. It's kind of a gruesome detail, but... Just want to let you guys know that I I'm truly am thankful for all the support that you've shown me on Twitter. A month later, Nade Shot received some positive news, however. He would be returning to Optic for the Black Ops 2 season. I am officially back on the Optic Gaming competitive Call of Duty Pro Team for the 2013 season and the rest of the 2012 season for Black Ops 2. But Nade Shot's Optic team disappointed online at Frag Cup 4 as they came up 7th and outside the money once again. Things changed, however, by UMG Chicago. The team picked up a first place finish after an exciting search and destroy round on Express. Anything right now. It is a 4v4 situation. It doesn't look like anybody is over near Nature. He should get the bomb plan down. So he does there get the bomb plan. And it is a 4 and 4 situation. Bomb plan. This all comes down to this. And we see Nishad gets taken out. Big T gets the kill on Crimson, though. It's a 3 on 3 situation now. Big Timer looking through. And then AX picks up a kill on Merc. And it's throughout. And huge play. Big Timer makes a big kill. And now Scum picks up on AX. And it's a 1v2. And then TP stuck in a corner. And it's going to be all up to this. And they have position on this. And this is it. And this is it. After the game, Nadeshot got in a confrontation with former Quantic teammate Aches that he later apologized for. I truly wish I would have handled my post-game excitement differently. Uh, we were very excited, uh, we were celebrating as a team, and we were definitely getting in on some trash talk. People really don't understand how long I've had <clears throat> issues with Aches as a player. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the video, he pushed me when I went to go shake their hands. Uh, I, I disagree with how it was handled. I don't think his actions were warranted with how I was acting, but then again, you know, emotions were flying high, so I can't really blame him for that. But uh, me and him have never gotten along. Uh, we've been having issues since 2008, and that's why, and that's why people really don't know the whole story because uh, we teamed for EGL late. He blamed the entire event on John and myself, so I, I really wanted to win. I really wanted to be. Despite the bad PR he received from his scuffle with Aches, Nadeshot signed with Red Bull as an esports athlete in January of 2013, giving him a big sponsorship that he would continue to have throughout his career. I am actually you know, officially an esports athlete for Red Bull Gaming. I signed my contract on Friday, so I know this is all news to you. Nade shot then headed to Dallas for the MLG Winter Championship, but came up short in the fifth to sixth spot after the team lost focus. Not going in favor of Optic. I think the Optic boys are warmed up. Our problem was we set the standard at eighth place is all we need, and then the rest of the tournament is a sort of a joke. And we actually quoted, "Let's just get some practice in before COD XP or Championships, whatever you want to call it." And that sort of puts in the mindset, at least myself, like this really doesn't matter, even though there's a lot of money on the. Then, in April 2013, Nadeshot would take the stage at his biggest event yet, COD Champs 2013, hoping to defend the title the team had earned in the predecessor event, Call of Duty to XP. To the finals of Call of Duty Championships, we got Joey, Merc, we got Will, Big Timer, <laughs> we got <laughs> Scumpy. <laughs> How you guys doing? <laughs> he doesn't he, have He's still in bed. While he was unable to take home the $400,000 prize like his team had at Call of Duty XP, Nadeshot was still able to take home $30,000 after he picked up a third place finish while taking out rivals Aches in the process. The follow this one up, but Crim6 is going to be there to take out Nadeshot. It is going to be a 3v3, and Big T is going to have that assistance here from Scum, but now it is going to come down to Aches, and out out the game is moving on. on. They're moving on to the top three. Oh my God, Benson. Scumpy with the three-piece, when it matters most. That oh. is why we call him one of the best players on the game right there. Big news came from Nade Shot and Optic owner Hex in June of 2013, when the team announced that they'd be moving into the Optic house so that they could live and practice together as a team. Uh, the Optic Gaming competitive team had decided to move into a house together. By the spring championship at the end of June, it seemed everyone had been following Nade Shot's YouTube channel, which was continuing to grow as he played in more and more events. The team also netted a third place finish at this event. Boys, that's going to be all she wrote. Optic Gaming moving on. Guaranteeing that top three finish, Revan. I like that. What's going on, bud? How are you guys doing? Good. As you can see, there's uh, quite a few people here already. What up, bud? We got everybody in this thing. Let me, uh, let me, let me check in. Wish, wish me a pee. I don't know. Bang, 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 bang. I like that.
August rolled around with Nadeshot reaching 700,000 subscribers on YouTube, and proved to be a time for him to discuss the struggles he had went through, to arrive where he was today. A, a gaming career wasn't really typically, it wasn't ideal at home, just because my mom was never really, she never really understood what I was doing. She never really understood the concept of, of YouTube and live streaming and winning tournaments. She all kind of thought it was a faker or a scam uh, that people were just trying to get money out of me. For me, it was, it was very hard to do YouTube and do streaming full time and commit to a pro team because I was working about 25 to 30 hours a week at McDonald's when I was a full time high school student. And then when I graduated high school, I moved on to college. It just got to a point where I knew that I would not be able to do what I wanted to do uh, with gaming while living at home. I, my, my parents, they, they were supportive after I won COD XP and won the $400,000 prize and I took 100000 of that home with me. Then they started to see that, hey, there might be a future in this. The problem with moving into an apartment 40 minutes away by Hex uh, was that I had to quit school and I had to quit my job. I went through a lot of struggles in, in 2012 while I was living with my girlfriend. I, she was paying like two-thirds of rent. Uh, she was paying for groceries. The only thing that I was really paying was, was internet, a third of rent, and an electric bill because I really couldn't afford anything else. I took the $100,000 that I won from COD XP and I put it in a bank account and I was, for the most part, living off of whatever money I had saved up from McDonald's and then I was, I was making a lot of withdrawals from my savings account. And that, that money was going quick, faster than you think. And then on top of that, I had to pay like $30,000 in taxes. So it, the, the money wasn't, wasn't as good as a lot of people think. The team struggled at Gfinity too, after having just placed third at the original Gfinity event earlier that year. And Nage had apologized to many of his disappointed fans afterwards. All infused and vintage was just going on. The last three hard points is really where they capitalize. Yeah. And, and, and Optic, which had done previously a really good job breaking up hard points, were not able to do it there. And there you. I really, th I truly thought we were going to win this tournament because we've been playing the best online uh, scrims that we've played all year. Uh, we felt comfortable with the team. It was, it was going, it was going great. And three matches later. We were out of the tournament on the first day, and we placed 9th through 12th. Nadeshot tried to go big for OpTic at the MLG Fall Invitational after the team had led Complexity 5-0 in Search and Destroy in the finals. However, OpTic collectively choked hard as Complexity ultimately picked up the win. Nonetheless, Nadeshot had stayed true to his promise, and the team's second place finish was still a huge improvement. Oh, he sees him, he sees him in the middle of the ticket booth. Ace will pick up that kill. It is all up to Nature on a one on three. Up they, they were down, but they were off by five rounds. Crimson takes Ace, oh and there God. you go. Complexity, come back, down five rounds, and they are your MLG Fall Invitational Champions. Nadeshot had high hopes for Call of Duty Ghosts, which released not long after and was picked up by MLG for the Fall Championship in 2013. After being shocked by adversity who came out of nowhere, Optic finished between 13th and 16th at the event. After the disappointment, Nadeshot once again apologized to his fans. And there we go with adversity taking out Optic Gaming here on the main stage. Wow. They fought through the open bracket and they wow. just took out one of the most popular teams in esports in their first main stage appearance. Because if you didn't know already, we had a very disappointing finish in the tournament. We ended up placing top 16, which obviously isn't in the top 8 that we've placed the entire tournament season for Black Ops 2, so obviously it was a very disappointing finish. After yet another disappointing finish at UMG Philly, the team faced some changes Nadeshot announced in January of 2014 that he largely took the heat for. Big Timer, the captain of the Optic Gaming competitive roster, announced yesterday that he will be retiring from competitive Call of Duty. Now, he's not going anywhere. I don't want anybody to have that misconception. He's actually going to be coaching us. Uh, Scumpy left and has joined Envious for the 2014 season. Uh, you can see behind me, uh, he has left the house. He's not here anymore. And uh, it, was, it was pretty surprising. Success had continued to come his way, however. And after reaching 1 million subscribers, it wasn't just success that was coming his way. It was his old friend Scump as well. You guys know how much I appreciate a million subscribers. Oh, this is awful. My feet are freezing. We hit a million! Seth has come back. The new roster Nate Shaw was leading proved to be strong and managed a third place finish in the Call of Duty Championship in 2014. 
matching their finish they'd had the year before. Knife and Bell's making up for it as he takes out Sensor. Saints is the last one. They've got eyes on him. No and need for a nade shot. You have it. They'll close it out without dropping a player. Scumpy fired up as Optic Gaming shuts it down, and there's the hugs between Nate Shot yep. and Kloyster. All is forgiven. Yeah, absolutely. A win will do that for a squad, won't it? About a week after COD Champs, Nate Shot had a special announcement to make. He had decided to switch from streaming on Twitch to instead become a contracted streamer on MLG TV. This was a decision that would continue to haunt him for the rest of his career. He had tied himself to an MLG service that ultimately disappointed. Oh, formally that I am going to be continuing on with this uh, light streaming that I've been on with MLG TV, and I'm going to be doing that uh, for the next couple years exclusively. His Optic team also disappointed once again on Ghosts, with a 9th to 12th place finish at UGC Niagara, leading many Optic and Nadeshot fans to question if the team would ever win an event on and Ghosts. That's why, you know, Complexity were able to roll away with this one. He tried to make something happen, but look at that there. I mean, and another thing to point out, too, just look at the way that all the players in Complexity, look how many kills they have amongst all of them. It's, it's absurd. But Nadeshot delivered not long later. Later, he led the team back into form at the first X Games MLG event and ultimately led them to a first place victory. The first MLG event that Nade Shot had ever won. Because it's up to Gunjar to maybe make a plan here, and he knows that too. Glacer and Gunjar look like they might meet up here in a second. Glaze got the better weaponry oh as well. This gosh. Bulldog up close could be devastating. Gunjar and he can't running plant out of now. Time. He can't plant now. He doesn't have enough time to plant. So he's got to get the kill. Gunjar's got to find Clayster. Clayster's going to look. And he gets the kill. And Optic Gaming wins it. Optic Gaming, your X Games gold medal champion. What a performance. This, my friends, is an X Games gold medal. Weeks later, in June of 2014, Optic had another solid second place finish that was ultimately capped off, however, by an embarrassing 3-0 loss in the finals to Nadeshot's rival Aches. We're talking about possible retirement from competitive Call of Duty, and uh, something I've been kind of struggling with severely in the last couple of weeks is anxiety. Days later, Nadeshot discussed that he was contemplating retirement from pro gaming later that year. This plan, however, failed to materialize, and he did not retire at the end of 2014. Ultimately, Nadeshot disappointed the fans in another Gfinity event, as Optic landed in the 5th to 8th spot at Gfinity 3 on their way to a 4th place finish at MLG Dallas, where he played his fellow Optic members of Optic Nation in the Constellation game. Players right there, and that's going to be another one. Kill's going to get one. Nadeshot spots one. That's going to be a shot. Going to be just watching bottom white. He has no idea they're going to be coming from the side. Here's going to be one player. There's Nadeshot getting one. He's got it. Out of dodge. He should be shot in the face momentarily. Nadeshot able to clean that up. Get October brought about the last event on Ghosts that Nadeshot would be attending, the UMG Nashville, where the team came up in the 5th to 6th spot. Nobody was likely happier than Nadeshot, moving on past Ghosts, a game he had not performed very well on consistently. Nadeshot would close out the Ghost season talking about how he got into competitive gaming in the first place, something that had became a massive part of his life. So we actually moved to game battles, we were just looking for other places to play. My friends and I knew about game battles from Gears of War and Halo, but we never really got into it with those games. But when Call of Duty 4 came out and we got bored of the S&D pubs, that's what we did. And it was nothing spectacular at the beginning. Like we were, we were going like five and three or five and four, and then we want to disband the team and try and remake it, see if we can get that undefeated record. And I remember at one point, our team was called Chase the Chickens, and I don't because the chickens on uh, what map? Was a new Call of Duty released in November of 2014 and brought about new opportunities for Nadeshot, as he and Optic headed to MLG Columbus at the end of the month. Coming off a largely lackluster ghost season, Nadeshot was determined to start the Advanced Warfare season hot, and they did just that, finishing second while ultimately losing to Aix's phase squad in the finals. While he may not have been on top at the end of the last event, Nadeshot was on top of the world at the end of 2014, as he was named Esports Player of the Year ever video game awards and they used to do a show on Spike TV but they switched over to a different format and this year they decided to add an esports player of the year award and it was a fan vote and it just so happens that the green wall came through and you guys voted me in at MLG Orlando Nadeshot managed to block off Sunner Gaming Cinderella finish as Optic eventually came up first at the event and forced the surprising team of Stunner down to second doesn't matter. Phenomenal plays from Optic here in the grand final. And to be honest, 
The crowd chanting, yeah, it's all over. Yeah, the crowd chanting, it's all over. It, it is all over, and it's been over for a while. When Opti Gaming managed to just get 10 points in two minutes and, and like 34 seconds, how do you expect a team to reply to that? You just simply can't. The players have stopped. Optic start the high fives in the booth, Matt. And Optic Gaming, as we said, your UMG Orlando Grand Champions. Yeah, I'm this past weekend we were competing in a tournament. And if you guys didn't know, we ended up winning that tournament. Next, the Optic squad went to another Call of Duty Championship. This time on Advanced Warfare. Nadeshot had finished third at the two previous COD Champs events. But instead, in 2015, two shocking things occurred instead for many fans. First, Optic placed 7th, far lower than expected. Then, Nadeshot made an announcement on April 4th, 2015, that shocked the entire esports community. Basically, I am going to be taking a break from competitive Call of Duty, a leave of absence if you will. And the reason why I'm calling it a break or a leave of absence and not retirement is because I'm very confident that I will be revisiting my competitive roots and continue to compete in the next Call of Duty title and maybe towards the end of Advanced Warfare. I just need uh, some time to step back and really pursue other things that I'm passionate about. Nadeshot never walked away from Call of Duty as a whole, despite his break from competitive. He still continued to play, and many fans have high hopes that he will return to the game for Black Ops 3. Nonetheless, Nadeshot is easily the greatest, most recognizable icon of Call of Duty esports. Arguably, Optic and Call of Duty esports as a whole may have never gotten as big or as successful as it is today, had it not have been for Nadeshot. Esports needs a player to bridge the gap between events and the lives of professionals. A player that brought the experience of events closer to fans than ever before. Nadeshot did this, and while he has inspired an entire generation of youth to follow in his footsteps and pursue their dreams of going pro, and maybe, just maybe, one day one of these who were inspired will end up with 2 million subscribers of their own. Hey guys, I'm Spawn Trap. Thank you for sticking around to watch the entire Nade Shot movie. It does mean a lot. If you guys want to check out some of my older documentaries, I have the Optic one on the screen, along with a playlist that contains all the documentaries that I've made, which is now over 10. There's hours worth of stuff to watch there. But coming out on Friday, for those of you who are Optic fans, even Phase fans, we have a Pomage documentary. We can't really call it Pomage the Movie. Nikki HD already took that name in her Pomage the Movie montage that she made. So we're going to call it Pomage the Documentary likely. But that is the thumbnail made by Luke T Concepts. You will be seeing when that thing comes out on Friday. Very excited because he has also reached 2 million subscribers. Crazy to see that they both have done it in about the same week. We don't really know where Pomage is at, but I'm just going to assume that somewhere around Friday he will reach that milestone. So that's when we're going to put it out. So be sure to stick around and subscribe if you've not already. So you can check that thing out on Friday. It will be a half an hour long. It's going to be awesome as well. So if you liked this one, be sure to come back on Friday and check that one out. Anyways, guys, I'm Spawn Trapped, and I will see you in the next one.